Welcome, everyone, to the Association, a new podcast hosted by yours truly, Jerry Riles, with NBA analyst Dr. Lloyd Walton. Dr. Lloyd Walton spent six years in the National Basketball Association playing with the Milwaukee Bucks. His collegiate career started at Marquette University. He is a product of Chicago, and he joined us on this weekly podcast, episode number one. Dr. Lloyd Walton, welcome to the association. How are you? I'm great, Jerry. Thanks for having me. I've uh, been looking forward to this, uh, sharing some insights and thoughts about sports in general, but particularly the NBA. You know, uh, we really welcome you uh, being a part of this uh, new transition and new journey as far as this podcast is concerned. You bring a wealth of insight and knowledge uh, to the table that many of our listeners and our new fans would love to hear about, not only the X's and O's on the court, but what goes on behind the scenes as far as the players' relationships are concerned and the business matter at hand as well. Now, again, you played uh, six seasons in the National Basketball Association. Many people and many young African-American males in particular strive to reach that particular goal. Was that a goal of yours to play uh, in the NBA? Well, like most kids, I just started off playing basketball. Mm -hmm. just, just, just playing, being competitive, you know, messing around with your friends and what have you. Uh, I'm so old that, you know, it wasn't a lot of sports on TV. If it was, particularly basketball, it was delayed. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I fell in love. I played all sports, but I actually fell in love with the game of basketball. And my goal was just, you know, when a young kid, I, you know, it's a crazy question. I just wanted to play, right? So, you know, you get to seventh, eighth grade, and you think about going to high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was growing up in Chicago High School. I just wanted to make the Bloom High School basketball team. Mm. That was it. Okay. And um, a lot of different things happened, uh, which I'll reveal later on with my memoirs that be coming out in March. But, um, you know, I got a chance to go play in, uh, at Mount Carmel High School because uh, after one year they gave me a scholarship to come to the city of Chicago mm -hmm. and play. And that's when I began to think about, okay, they're talking about going to college and, and being able to go to college because you play a sport, basketball in my case. So I began to focus a little bit more on maybe being able to go to college. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very, very fortunate um, to actually go to Marquette University. Um, and that's kind of like my senior year in high school and going to Marquette was when I started thinking about, man, I, I, I can maybe go to the NBA. And it was a goal. There were a lot of naysayers and a lot of different things that were happening uh, regarding athletes uh, going to the pros, particularly one who was my size, you know, six feet, a little over six feet tall, mm -hmm. and, and with a small, small frame. You know, there was a lot of people saying, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. But, yeah, I would say it was a goal of mine, uh, absolutely. What is the purpose of doing a podcast? What news, what information, what would you like to share with your audience as you continue to build this over a, a period of time? What's your goal well, in accomplishing I, this uh, in, in this podcast? I think one of the things that happens is that um, I don't want to be, I don't want a podcast that's going to be prisoner of the moment. Okay, you get that every evening at, at, at five o'clock news and ten o'clock news, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you get that the next morning, and it's solely kind of based upon well, what happened that night. Mm -hmm. But I want to be able to dig a little bit deeper and not just give you the score, but what led to that score? Mm -hmm. How did that score actually happen? What's happening with the players in respect to winning, in respect to losing, in respect to um, their future, mm -hmm. uh, in respect to contracts that are coming up, injuries that that happen. What happens to a player? Where do they go? How do they get there? Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's the mental part, the psychological part uh, of an injury and things like that. So I want to give uh, our audience something very, very different than they get at 5, 7, and 10 o'clock news mm -hmm. uh, that they wouldn't get anywhere else besides coming to us or someone like us. The Association, a new podcast here, NBA analyst Dr. Lloyd Walton. I failed to mention in the introduction um, of you that you're currently the NBA Players Association life coach and counselor. How long have you been in that position and how did you attain that position? You know, I hate to even say it, man. I've been doing this for 21 years. This makes my 21st year okay. as a uh, counselor. I'm a senior counselor for NBA Players Association, which means that if you have played in the NBA in the last 20 years, mm -hmm. I have uh, met with you. I've shared information with you in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And that's for everybody who's played in the league. Mm -hmm. um, I, got to this, I got to this position, actually, um, not as a goal, but as happenstance. 
wanting to get close to the game again. At that time, I was executive director for the Jordan Family Life Center, and um, I got a call from the NBA office asking would I like to be an assistant coach for the pre-draft that's held in Chicago every year. Right. I said, yeah, man, I would love to do that, right? So uh, I did it, and then I, I, I started seeing so many people that I played with, played against, coaches, scouts, and all that. I was like, man, wouldn't it be great to be able to go back uh, to the game I love in that industry and, and work? And opportunities just came about slowly but surely, and uh, I was notified about them, and I, I applied for one. I didn't get it. And then uh, next thing you know, I get a call and did, that I didn't apply for, and they said, hey, this position is open. Are you interested? And then I did apply yeah. <laughs> and uh, had a, a great interview, and uh, I got the job. But I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, I did not expect to be in this capacity mm -hmm. for 21 years. Uh, in fact, I know that I, I've stayed too long. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, man, Why I stayed too that? long. <laughs> well, because um, – there's so many other things that I want to do and can do. Mm -hmm. uh, as I shared with you a brief, you know, I'm finishing up my memoirs. I'm on the last chapter, which just the journey and chronicling this journey is unbelievable. I'm only the third player in the history of the NBA to obtain a doctorate. Right. Um, I played in the NBA when there was only 280 players in the NBA, mm -hmm. very esoteric groups. Um, but also I want to do some other things. I look at, probably mentoring in the sense of I'm now certified as a life coach and I like to I'm starting a business actually a consulting business for athletes only okay where we're going to do life coaching we're going to do uh make transitional plans for everybody has a coach as an athlete uh, in your respective sport but do you have a coach in your respective life right to help you uh, address obstacles mm -hmm. uh, challenges and we all have them. I don't care where you're at. You right. all have them. Right. Who do you go to? Who do you talk to? Well, you know if you don't know a certain offense or defense or how to attack it or get, become a better shooter or, or defender, you have a coach. Mm -hmm. But you don't have one for life. And so that's what I want to bring to the table And as I leave the NBA Players Association uh, in the next several years or so. So you played under uh, Don Nelson with the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, Nelly was my coach with yeah. the Bucks, mm -hmm. the winningest coach in NBA history. Sure. Uh, in fact, he's uh, he's in my book. I got him to share a few things about our relationship and things we accomplished when I was there with the Bucks. Okay. What made you reach higher to go for your doctorate degree? As you mentioned, there only you are only one of three Correct. former NBA players yeah. to have a doctorate degree. Yeah. Shaquille O'Neal is one. Yeah. The other is. Oh God, I can't. Uh, New York Nick. Yeah, yeah, Dick Barnett. Dick Barnett. He was the first. He was the first. And of course, yourself. Yeah. What made you want to challenge yourself uh, away from the game of basketball to improve who you are, Dr. Lloyd Walton? Jerry, um, it, it could be answered in a number of different ways, but I always think about growing up. Uh, and like, it wasn't like I was a great student. You know, I always tell people I'm a grinder. I'm not a great student. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't a great student. Um, I just never only wanted to be thought of as a basketball player. Now, my friend and I were talking this morning. I've told him the story a hundred times, but even when I was in high school and used to go to the to, to the dances or the parties or whatever, and my friends would say, they would introduce me as, oh, this is Lloyd. You know he play on a team. I would actually cringe because that's not how I want to be identified. And I was too, too young to understand why because mm -hmm. I, that's what I did. That's not who I am. Right. And that kind of – thought process has followed me through the rest of my life. Now, in regards to getting a, a, a doctorate, even a master's, my family was huge on education. Mm -hmm. uh, I was raised by what I call my tag team. My mom, my grandmother, my aunt, and my grandmother and aunt were twins. Okay? Oh, wow. Yeah. And my aunt and uncle, they didn't have any kids, so I kind of raised like, you know, only child in that situation. But every day, Every time I talked to my grandmother and mother, and I wasn't a good student, I was always messing up. Right. They talked about the importance of education. Mm -hmm. They always talked about this is something that can never be taken away from you. And Jerry, you know, when you have a hard head, it takes a long time for it to get through. Sure. But I always remembered that. And then when I began to, to think about my life going forward uh, after basketball, I started thinking about the first thing that happened was I, I started, had a job and I was looking at the check. And I was like, man, this is not going to cut it, right? So what am I going to do? To get more money, you have to bring more credentials. I kept it as simple as that, hmm. right? And it took me a few years, but then I went back to school and got my master's degree. And I did get some more money. 
-hmm. And I did get elevated, you know, from like a project manager, now I'm a director and things of that nature. So I always saw that way, that as a way to improve my life financially, uh, which also would help my family. And then uh, all of a sudden, I, somewhere along the line, I started thinking about, okay, um, how can I put the cherry on top? Mm -hmm. I've reached the NBA, the highest level in basketball. What could I do? Man, I said, man, it'd be great to be able to get a doctorate and be able to, that's part of your legacy going forward. My kids, my grandkids, and so on and so forth will be able to say that, that Pops, you know, Grandpa didn't only play sports at the highest level, right. but he also got a doctorate degree in education, which tells them either route you take, you can achieve it, yeah. right? And so I kind of really gravitated towards that. I really felt strongly about that, but I knew, Jerry, it was going to be one of the toughest things I ever had to do. And it was. Was it? Oh, my God. Because now I'm talking about I'm so much older. Mm -hmm. But hell, I didn't do that good when I was younger in school. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> Just being honest. And so now I'm going into a classroom environment where nobody knows me. Nobody's giving me any break. They don't know I'm a basketball player, played in the NBA. And when they did find out, it was much later on. And, and I had to go in there, and, and, and I keep using the term grind. I had to ask all the right questions. I couldn't be shy. Um, and I had to compete each and every day, particularly with my doctorate. Every day you came to class, you had to get up mm -hmm. and you had to talk about your topic and how you were going to make that a realization, uh, however you want to do it, whether you're going to do research or, you know, whatever it was. But so, yeah, it just it just happened almost organically. And it happened like this. I must tell this real quick. Okay. So part of my job is help with at that particular time, our focus at the Players Association was helping guys. Uh, take classes that they wanted to in pursuit of their degree, right, mm -hmm. because they left school early. And so I made a call one day uh, for a player because he wanted to take this class. And the guy uh, in admission said, hey, man, what did you say? After we got through talking about the player, he said, what did you say your name was? I said, Lloyd Walton. He said, oh, yeah, I remember you, man. I went to Leo High School. I said, okay. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, mom, come. I said, man, you know, I got my highest score ever at Leo High School. So we joked about that. And I said, man, I, one time I was thinking about, man, going back to school to get my doctorate. He said, well, why don't you apply? I was like, oh, man, they're not going to accept me. Mm -hmm. He says, man, just apply. Be careful what you ask for. Yeah. Two weeks later, I came home and I checked the mail, and that was my admissions. Is my, that right? My acceptance. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and I got scared. You know what? Because right. now I'm like, okay, now you got to go do it. Never, exactly. So um, that's how it kind of started, man. Hey, how, did, how did how did uh, sports, how did playing <clears throat> high school ball at at, at Mount Carmel, Marquette University, and in the league. How did that transition over to you applying your skills to accomplish your goal and getting your doctorate degree? Uh, one thing about it, when I go out and speak to uh, young kids, uh, and particularly their parents too, so they can understand sports is not throwing the ball, catching the ball, not only that, but when I look at uh, the skills that uh, I acquired, as an athlete, even at the youngest of age, mm -hmm. those skills become transferable. And what I'm talking about very simply is discipline, for example, mm -hmm. right? You know, to even play in the, at the high school level, there's a certain amount of discipline you're going to have to have, right? right? right. You're going to be held accountable by who? Your coach. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be any different in, in, in the classroom. Your professor, your teacher is going to hold you accountable. So I can go down the long, you're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to be consistent. I can go down, go down the list of things that I acquired in terms of skills as an athlete, mm -hmm. and 90% of them transfer to when you're working in the classroom in regards to education. Okay. As a uh, life coach, Dr. Lloyd Walton, NBA Players Association, uh, life coach, counselor, how do you convey that message to not only the current players that you're interacting with, but also some of the former players who are who are trying to make the or are trying to make the transition from playing days to the real world. Well, you know, everybody's different. Um, it, it all depends on what do you want to do. Because mm -hmm. as a life coach, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to uh, explore this journey with you, so you will be able to determine what it is that you want and need to do. Now, the first thing I want to do is make you aware of what the situation is. And that's just through conversation, exploration. We're going to, we're going to make you aware of what's going on. We're going to get some clarity, okay? And then we're going to start looking at getting you some confidence and some motivation 
to be able to move forward and take the steps that you need to take. Uh, when you look at athletes, uh, or for, let's say they don't play anymore, for example. Okay, so what have you done? Uh, are you, did you finish college? That's a legitimate question, sure. right? Right. Okay, I didn't finish college. Okay, so you went to school two years, you, don't, you didn't finish, you don't have a college degree. What legitimate skills do you have to offer in the particular industry that you want to go in? Because what industry is it? Because I'll just make a joke about it. If you're looking to go to Google, they're not looking for somebody who can get a triple-double. Right. They're looking for a creative mind, right. right? So we have to really work at somebody from the beginning, almost at, it is at the beginning, at the beginning to figure out what is it that you want to do and what industry and what passion do you want to have, do you have for that industry? Mm -hmm. And then we'll kind of figure it out step by step. But it's a process, and it's not an easy process, particularly if you've had some success as an athlete because there's nothing like starting over. And I always try to make uh, athletes remember. Remember when you had that, played that first game? Mm -hmm. How that was? Because I remember my first actual game. Now I messed around on the playground, but my first actual game, I shut the ball to the wrong basket. When, when, when you say your first game, do you mean the high school level, collegiate level, no, or pro level? No, when you were first introduced <laughs> to the game. Okay, okay. Right? So now because you're- As just, a youngster. As a youngster, mm -hmm. because now we're getting ready to introduce you to a new industry and a new way to um, to acclimate yourself. Yeah. How was that when you first dribbled the ball? You couldn't. Right. The first time you shot the ball, how many how many shots did you take before you made one? Right. Well, you had confidence, right? Or did you just quit? Because it's easy to quit. Right. 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 So you're gonna have those same kinds of experiences when you start off in a new industry because you're really not necessarily prepared. That's exactly right. Right. You don't know what you're going into. You don't know what the requirements are. You don't know what some of the challenges are, go uh, are going to be. Right. So we're starting from the beginning. And I'm trying to help a player or individual realize that this is going to be brand new and that the thing that you have to understand is that you, you want to do it. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it for mom, dad, wife, children. If that's what you come up with, then cool. But you have to want to do it ultimately for us to get through this and me to coach you through it to get to the point where you're confident to be on your own. You know what? It's interesting because that's the philosophy that the, the, the great late uh, legendary John Wooden had with the UCLA Bruins back in the day in the 60s and 70s with the tremendous run that they had. He would always have the players come in day one and unlace their shoes <laughs> and then lace them back up and the yeah. players were kind of puzzled and questioning him, Coach, why, why you got us lacing up our shoes? We know how to lace up our shoes. Right. But it was a matter of starting from the basics and getting that mindset and that mentality in place and of course, we know the historic run that that UCLA Bruins uh, team put together. But that's a great uh, philosophy and a great mm -hmm. uh, uh, logic that you use in having these players understand and, and prepare themselves from the transitioning process of, again, leaving the court and, and, and getting in the real world. Um, let's let's get to the, the court itself. Again, you've, uh, you've been uh, a part of the game for uh, as a too player. long, too long. Okay, we'll say for too long. We'll <laughs> no, say no, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> but uh, I want to, I want to, I want to ask you. You've seen a lot uh, as far as this league is concerned. Um, I had a great relationship with the the great late uh, Norm Van Leard, who was a longtime staple for the Chicago Bulls, and he should share some stories about, you know, what the game was like in the '70s. And, and of course, I, I, I watched how the game, you know, transitioned in the '80s course the 90s with the dynasty bulls here in chicago and to see what has transpired to it the way the game is today uh, from your perspective being a player and now involved with the players association uh, you know in a nutshell share with us that journey as far as how the game itself and the league has evolved wow um what I think about, when I think about, at least even when I was a kid watching the NBA on Delayed, reading all the magazines and what have you, because you can go to the library back then, you had to, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Wasn't on your phone, you didn't have one anyway. Uh, I thought about competition mm -hmm. and um, how guys weren't expected to, weren't expecting uh, to do anything but play a game that they fell in love with and just competed. And there's so much happened in between there and where I'm at right now in terms of the game and how it's evolved because now it's entertainment, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I think there is um, maybe 
competition and 50% entertainment. Wow. Yeah. I mean, when you look at it. Is that bad for the game? The way the game is played today for me, mm. um, they've taken the competition out of it to me, the highly competitive competition out of it. Uh, anytime you can let a guy take 25 dribbles and you can't touch him and he's able to just shoot freely, that's not being competitive. I mean, I don't know where you grew up. Did you grow up in Chicago? Of course. Okay, so we, we had a game we used to play on the playground called 21 and some people called right. it varsity, right? Right. That's what it is. Without touching anybody, you play. Do you do you play twenty one in varsity? Right. Is it not that you get the ball? Now you going one on one against everybody. Jerry, am right. I right? No, no, you got it. That's, I didn't even look at it. I know my perspective. Right. And everybody I talk to, I don't care if you're from New York and California. All of my peers and people that I talk to, when I tell them, give them that analogy, yeah. they be like, "You're right. Yeah, that's what it is." But even back then, Jerry, right. we could defend somebody. We get up in this jock, right? Yeah. Now you can't. Why? Because. David Stern, God rest his soul, uh, who just passed away, mm -hmm. uh, he was always searching and looking for a way to improve the game in terms of fans, right? right. Getting them come through that turnstile. Right. Get them to turn on that TV. And uh, I think they did a, um, I forgot the terminology, but anyway, they did a, a long study. I'm sorry, a study, mm -hmm. right? To figure mm -hmm. out how do we do that? How do we get more people to turn on the TV? How do we get more people to come through the turnstile? And part of it was not be so physical. You have the best athletes in the world. Let them exhibit that that that, that athleticism that they have. Okay. The running, the jumping, and all that. Right. So we got to stop impeding them from doing that. Because what sense does it? It's almost like having a, a, a Lamborghini in the garage. Right. If it's just in the garage, it don't mean anything. Yeah. Let yeah. it go, baby. And then even if you get it out the garage, if you're just cruising down the yeah. street, yeah, it don't mean nothing, right? Yeah. You got to hit the road. Right. right. And so right. That, over the years slowly but surely they eliminated the physicality in the game okay and so now you see athleticism exhibited more than anything else right right everybody wants to dunk and when they dunk what do they do they show their muscles they show this they look in the stands they do all of that kind of stuff right that's not real competition man so let me ask you this question with gaming the way that it hit it has exploded mm -hmm. uh, with this generation and this day and age uh, and I played video games with my son back in the day I uh, and there was really no defense. It was all offense. <laughs> Do you think with the generation and the mindset that the, the late, great David Stern, the commissioner back during that time, saw that scoring was more important than physicality and defense? I won't say that he said I thought it was more important. No, that wasn't it. It was, it was to actually to bring in more fans. To keep but, but more scoring in the game, hence the three-point shot, would 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 bring more fans to the game? Would you imagine, or, or well, bring it, more of, of a bigger, wider? But it's not like audience. they shoot great percentages from the three. That's not the point. No, but that right? is the point because it based upon the question that you asked. Because if more scoring is what you're saying, right. it didn't bring him necessarily more scoring. No, of course not. The, the lack of defense and physicality brought in more scoring, not the three point shot. But from a fan's perspective, a fan's perspective, a fan wants to see Steph Curry crank up a three as opposed to, you know, a Chris Dunn for the Bulls playing tenacious defense to prevent that three from happening. But you can't prevent it. That's my point. You can't guard anybody. Don't tell me <laughs> that's my You can't. So, but that's, that's my point as far as the evolution of the game is that uh, David Stern, the commissioner, said we have to get more scoring. No, I don't believe that. Maybe no. he did. I don't believe that. Okay. I believe it was still about the fans coming through. What is the fans coming through? What do the, the fans team? want? I don't know. But the fans want what you give them. That's what they want. So when you come through the turnstile, what do owners want? They want to get paid. Right. Right? right. And so when you allow them to be able to play the game the way they play it without physicality, it's going to do all the things that you just said. It's going to put – they were going to score more points. Um, the game is going to be more entertaining. Right. And more people are going to come through there and pad their pockets and make the game what it is today. Well, you know, it, it's, <laughs> it's interesting. That, that's, that's, a, that's a good analogy and a good philosophy, but – you know, let's take our own Chicago Bulls, okay? okay. And, and you and I have been following the team 2019-2020. We're approaching the All-Star uh, weekend coming up shortly. But the head coach, Jim Boylan, has been <laughs> stressing a transition game up and down and three-point shooting. Unfortunately, the Chicago Bulls currently don't have a real 
three-point threat. But that's his mindset, and that's his, 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 his thought process and what he put, it, put into it. And again, I, I think that's the, the, the case because as you look at all sports, mm-hmm. and you talk about getting fans through the turnstile, it's about scoring, whether it's football, you talk about the, you know the Kansas City Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes and, and what he's been able to do, Lamar Jackson with the Baltimore Ravens, how he's been able to electrify uh, you know games. You look at hockey, they've eliminated physicality in there as much as they possibly can to, to try to up the scoring. You look at baseball, some people say they're juice balls. I mean, the scoring is what everyone is looking for. And again, I go back to gaming and video games because – if you play, I I've play. never played gaming. Okay. I, don't, I don't play any of so, so for me, so for me, when I would play, with the, you know, the NBA, you know, or uh, Madden, in a, it was all about scoring. I, I tried to play the defense, <laughs> but it was all about scoring. And I think that mindset, because you talk about analytics and sabermetrics and everything that's applied to sports now, it's about scoring and getting outscoring your opponents. Yeah, but see, when you talk about football, football didn't get there because of scoring. Football got there because of injury. That's why. They, that's how they that's got part there. Part of it, yeah. Right, because no, no, no. This is the real deal. Because too many guys were leaving the league um, hurt for the rest of their life. Right. Not able to leave a, live a, a, a sufficient uh, life and take care of themselves and, and being crippled and and all those kinds of things. That was their impetus for their situation. Uh-huh. Everybody wants you to score, but when you talk about a game, why why do you think that most people my age or people that's older than me don't particularly like the NBA game? And they score a lot. You think they just because they don't like the, they don't like the game the way it's played, right? And right. I, and and I, young people, let me just finish. And young people like it because it is scoring, right? But if but but that's what they grew up on. That's not the real game. I'm I not agree. taking away from anybody like that. And I and I say this all the time to older guys around my age who talk about certain players being the best shooters they ever seen. Mm-hmm. Could you be the best shooter that you ever seen if you were under duress, like say a, a Detroit Pistons team? The bad boys. Right. Hell no, you couldn't. No. So stop talking about this guy as the best shooter ever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> After Mahone and, and Lambert and Benny Johnson and I said, beat you up? You think you're going to be able to shoot like that? There was a time when the guy hit two shots, the coach would tell you, put him on his butt. Right. right. And the referee would say, get up, go shoot right. fouls. You know what I love about Charles Barkley and, and uh, Shaquille O'Neal on, the, uh, on, their, on their broadcast? Uh, they always say, touch the little guy up. Touch the little guy up. But you're absolutely right. You can't, can't do that. Man, let me tell you. And this, I was telling this, I forgot the player's name. He played about eight years in the NBA, but we, we were doing a demonstration. So, uh, And he was demonstrating about uh, uh, defending uh, Steph Curry. Right. And he was out at the point, at the, at the top of the key. Right. And with the rules today. So I said, so if you go out there, he's going to go around you. Right. Because you're not going to be able to put a hand on him. Like we used to hand check, right. you ain't going to be able to do that. Right. <laughs> and if you don't go out there, he's going to shoot threes like he's shooting horse. Right. So we've turned our game into 21 slash horse. horse. <laughs> That's all we got. Jerry, this, I mean, I'm not knocking. I'm just saying, I can't watch. This is, let me just say this last thing about it. I know people kill me about this. Yeah. <laughs> 30% of the guys that play today couldn't play in the league. 30%. 30%. They don't have any real skills. Maybe you got a guy all he can do is shoot. Yeah. And so he had to run to the corner. Right. Which is the most ridiculous thing in the world. Yeah. On a fast break and you run to the corner. You think this three is going to be more important than that two, and you're shooting the three at 28, 29 percent. Yeah. Are you crazy? <laughs> and I know that's the way the game is played. We were talking about the right. Bulls particular. Right. And he's got those guys trying to play like that, and they will never be successful trying to do that. You know, it, <laughs> I, I, you, hey, you said it, man. It's the association. It's a new <laughs> podcast. I'm the host, Jerry Riles, but the man of the hour, ladies and gentlemen, he is our NBA analyst, Dr. Lloyd Walton. We'll be with you every Thursday, and we look to get it on 6 o'clock. This is our first episode. We are at Petorino's here in the beautiful city of Chicago. But Dr. Lloyd Walton, we can continue to go on. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing this with you, my man. And I'm looking, very much looking forward to picking your brain and getting the insights. And I'm taking away from this first podcast, 21, Varsity, and Horse. So now when I watch an NBA game, okay. <laughs> that's in my mind. Real quick before we, uh, we say goodbye, 
Uh, what was your thoughts on uh, the big man coming back, man? I was a little leery of uh, the expectations okay. uh, for him. It's just some of them are so unfair. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be with anybody who's a star quality guy. Uh, he played obviously great last night. I don't expect that. And I'll give you a quick analogy. About a month ago, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo for yeah. the Milwaukee Bucks yeah. had five threes, and people were going crazy. They were prison at the moment. And I bet my buddy 100 bucks there would not be another game that he played this year right. where he hit five threes. Right. Those are, those, those are outliers. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you, you can't get caught up into that. I want Zion to be a star star, and I think he has the, the qualities, the personality to do all of that. I just want him to be able to take his time. Think about everybody who's been playing since the beginning of the first the first game, Right. how much better shape they are in right. compared to him. Yeah. Because he didn't have an arm injury, he had a leg injury, which then limits how much mobility and running you could do. Right. So, But for what he did last night, that was great. It, I was happy for the fan base. Right. Right of, right of New Orleans because yeah. he gave them hope again. Now the question is, what's going to happen in the next two games? Mm -hmm. How is he going to play? Because we already saw they backing off. Make yeah. the threes. Yeah, is he a three point shooter? No. Can he make some sometime? Yeah. Right. How often? When will he make four again? Keep your eye on it. Okay. Okay. Zion, <laughs> the, New, the New Orleans Pelicans. He uh, it was impressive and it was it was a shot in the arm for that franchise. And of course, the league, and there's uh, many saying that there's now gives the Pelicans an opportunity, some hope to, to make the maybe make the playoffs. You know, it's interesting. Again, before we say goodbye, it's interesting to have watched his game because he was taking those threes, and it was effortlessly. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was. It was just he wasn't. If you he didn't get a lot of lift. He his, doesn't. He does. He doesn't get lifting his shots anyway. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't. That's yeah. the way he shoots it. And it, it, the touch was was. Phenomenal. Is he a freak? Is he an alien? Is he potentially can be one of the top five best this game has ever seen if he stays healthy? That's way no. It I is, ain't that's, going. That's but way. I mean, and the only reason I asked that is because right. remember when LeBron was coming in and he was projected. He ain't LeBron. He ain't what LeBron. Does that mean? LeBron could do too much. Way too much. Remember, LeBron handles the ball. Right. LeBron has the kind of basketball acumen of a basketball player, and that's what they held against him trying to compare him to Michael and Kobe. LeBron is a ball, a 6'8 freak that wants to get everybody involved and make the right play all the time. When you saw, I won't even say Kobe ever did it. Let me just say, and you saw Michael do it in championship style. When he was double teamed, right. he passed the ball to Kerr. He passed it to um, a Paxson Pat, right. for open shots, right? right? A Kobe would go on and take the shot, right. Right? right? LeBron does that consistently and always has playing the ball, the game the right way. But I, this, this is what I want to say to you when I make that, that analogy or comparison is because Zion is, he played his first NBA game, right, on yeah. Wednesday night. First yeah. NBA game. Yeah. This guy, how old is he, 19, maybe 19. 20? Yeah. 19. And I, and I say LeBron because all the characteristics and attributes that LeBron brings to the game today, he didn't have that. At 18 years LeBron of age, had all that, he had all the skill sets. He had the he, raw skills. Set. He had to all, look. I saw the kid play right here in Chicago when he was a junior in high school. Okay, handling the ball, all of that kind of stuff. He had that. Zion well, can't handle the, the ball in I'm, high school is one thing. Wait a minute, he came right out of high school. Right. Zion went to college. Right. Okay, LeBron here. Yeah. yeah, but he went. To, he went, and he doesn't have the ball. Who has the ball? So it, Zion or LeBron? LeBron has the ball. Okay then. Right, but let's I, have the battle. But 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 LeBron and we, we can. This is what because this podcast is gonna be all about. Because man. you when you have the ball, right. not 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 like on a post up and stuff like that. When you bring the ball up, you're being asked to make decisions. Sure. When you're a player like Zion, sure, you're asked to do something with it once you get it. Right. You're not coming up making decisions. Right. There's a significant difference in that. And it's a lot more when you have the ball to make decisions for the rest of your guys versus putting the ball in the basket when you get it like a Zion, like a Charles Barkley. We're going to talk more about this, man. Because I, you know, I, <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> I'm telling you, man. And that's why you're here. This is the association, the new podcast with Dr. Lloyd Walton. Thank you so much on the first episode, brother. We're going to continue to dive into this every Thursday, man. My the man. Rest of the, lead, the rest of the way, man. We're going to talk NBA All-Star that's coming up here in Chicago the week of February 14th through the 16th. We'll also talk about the trade deadline coming up. And of course, we're going to focus on the second half of this NBA season leading up to the uh, 
leading up to the playoffs. We'll talk some college basketball because March Madness will be coming up as well. But Dr. Lloyd Walton, looking forward to it, brother. Thank you so very much. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Thank you so very much. <laughs> Folks, this is The Association. Check us out on our podcast, WCPT, Spotify. We will be on the RewindSports60.com. It is The Association with Dr. Lloyd Walton, Jerry Riles, your host. Thank you.